हेलो हाय एवरीवन टुडे विल चेक स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो इंडियन वेल्थ मैनेजमेंट सेक्टर फास्ट ग्रोइंग इंडस्ट्री Recently, a list of billionaires was published where India stood at third position with 271 billionaires. Interestingly, in 2020, as per Forbes list, India had 102 billionaires. So that's more than two times growth in last four years, which is the fastest rate in the world. Then I was looking at taxpayer information in India, and 2013, there were only 37,000 income tax filers in India with gross income more than one crore rupee. Fast forward today in 2023, this number has grown to 1 lakh 88 thousand. That's an 18 percent CGR growth rate. And the HNI, that is high net worth individual with income more than 1 million dollar, have grown at 21 percent CGR rate in last five years and expected to grow at 16 percent CGR rate in the next five years. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Pursa Finance Academy. Today, India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world, and with a growing economy, people are also getting wealthier. Now, if you recall, I did a detailed video on the rise of Indian affluent section, and in that report, I mentioned that there are around 60 million affluent Indian as of today that have grown at 12.6 percent CGR between FY19 to 23. Assuming similar growth rate, the total affluent Indian population would touch 100 million by 2027. It was a very interesting research report where I discussed the key growth drivers, top sectors, and stock to benefit from this growing affluent Indian segment. In today's video, I want to focus on the rise of High net worth and ultra high net worth individuals in India, and the opportunity it has created in the wealth management sector of India. In fact, this HNI and ultra HNI segment is growing at an even faster rate than other segments in India. Then we'll look at the top listed players in Indian wealth management space. But before we proceed, just a reminder that if you are looking for stock tips, then this channel is not useful. My endeavor is to discuss the growth potential in Indian economy across various sectors and theme, and help you identify fundamentally strong companies. But at the end of the day, you need to take that research forward and deep dive to identify the right stock for your own investment. So my channel is only useful if you are a knowledge seeker. As I always say that if you simply invest based on tips, then you can't create wealth in a sustainable manner. Because there are two most important qualities that you need in stock market: patience and conviction. And that comes only when you invest with your own research. I know that I cater to very small segment because majority of people are looking for stock tips. But I am happy with my small community. I also have a close community on my website where I have a weekly series in which I share one exclusive video every week that includes deep dive into Indian key macro events, top sectors, and stock to consider, along with stocks where I am investing my own money. I also share an Excel file with quarterly performance of more than 200 stocks, along with top stocks based on multiple themes. Again, it's not a buy or sell call, but very useful if you don't have much time to track the market. I spend nearly eight to ten hours a day and try to share all my learnings in these weekly videos. All right, now let's get started with today's video. Okay, before we discuss the opportunity in wealth management sector, let's first understand the bifurcation of Indian families across segment to understand the market opportunity. So this slide gives a clear picture of Indian household category as per the wealth threshold. Mass market represent household with wealth less than fifty thousand dollar, that is less than around forty lakh rupee. In 2022, there were around 20 21 crore household in this segment, and is expected to grow at 8 to 10 percent rate. Then you have emerging affluent segment with wealth between 50 to 100 thousand that represent around 3 crore household, and this segment is expected to grow at 11 to 13 percent rate. Then comes affluent segment with wealth between 100 thousand to 1 million dollar, and there are around 25 26 lakh household in this category, and expected to grow at 12 to 13 percent rate. And finally, you have HNI and ultra HNI, that is high net worth and ultra high net worth individual. This is a small segment with just two lakh household in total as of 2022, but this is the fastest growing segment with expected CGR rate of 13 to 14 percent. Interestingly, these two lakh household represent nearly 31 percent of total Indian household assets, and this would be 35 percent by 2027. Clearly, the wealth is highly concentrated, but that's part of capitalism. Rich would become richer. Anyways, I hope you got a fair idea of the market we are talking about. Now, obviously, when you make money, you want to invest it. And today, there are many options to invest in the Indian market across assets like equity, debt, gold, real estate, and so on. For instance, you have mutual funds for normal retail investors, where you can invest with as low as 500 rupee. However, for the HNIs and ultra HNI, there is a need for better tax planning, more diversified portfolio, and hence there is a separate category of investment for services like TMS, that is 
portfolio management service, then you have AIF, that is alternate investment fund, that invest in private equity market, real estate, commodity, hedge fund, derivative and so on. Alternate investment fund have higher return potential than normal mutual fund or PMS, but it comes at a risk of higher volatility. Then of course you have fixed income instrument and so on. And that's where there's a huge opportunity for established wealth management firm due to the fast growing HNI and ultra HNI segment. Now this slide gives a good picture of landscape of servicing financial savings in India. On Y axis you have mass retail, then high net worth and affluent individual and ultra HNI and family office. For mass retail, the involvement of relationship manager is low and as you go up the ladder, role of relationship manager increases. On x-axis, you have breadth of offering where you have single product, multi-product offering and then you have solution oriented offering. So for mass retail, you have brokers and fintech companies offering specific products. Then you have domestic banks, largely focused on insurance, mutual fund, loan products. This is the segment that cater to retail investors where you invest in mutual funds, insurance and so on. Then you have some boutique firms and private banks catering to ultra HNI and then you have established wealth managers where ultra HNIs are serviced by dedicated wealth manager. HNI segment include both relationship manager and DIY model and products include your alternate investment fund, portfolio management service, mutual funds, fixed deposit, structural debt and so on. Now there are various business models that are evolving in wealth management space. For instance, some companies are focusing more on ultra HNI whereas some are focusing on mass market client and some are focusing on both mass market and ultra HNIs. Then there are two major sources of revenue generation for this segment. First is distribution model, where the wealth management firm act as a distributor to suggest third party products like a mutual fund, insurance, PMS and so on. They either charge commission from the third party or from the client. And second is your manufacturer, where the firm has its own offering like portfolio management, alternate investment fund and so on. So I hope you got a fair idea of various business models within wealth management space. Although there are certainly opportunities in this segment, you should also understand the challenges. So first challenge is that this segment is cyclical in nature. Inflow of capital in wealth management space is influenced by market sentiment as well as mark to market gains. Hence, during a bull run, the space can grow at a faster rate whereas during a bear market, the growth can slow down. However, if you look at the bigger picture, there is a structural growth opportunity in this space. Then another challenge is availability of a good relationship manager which is an important aspect of wealth management segment. It's not easy to find good relationship managers. Then third risk is regulatory risk where the commission in mutual fund or PMS alternate investment fund is regulated by SEBI. So if SEBI decide to reduce this commission, it can negatively impact the yield of wealth management firms. Now let us look at the key players in this space. So first company in the list is 361, formerly known as IFL Wealth Management. Established in 2008, 361 is one of the largest wealth management firm in India with annual recurring revenue AUM of 2.2 lakh crore rupees. If you look at the AUM breakup, around 52% AUM is from AIF, then 36% is from PMS and 12% is from mutual fund. They have around 9% share in your uh, AIF segment and 4% in PMS. 361 also has distribution business with total brokerage revenue AM of 2.3 lakh crore. So in total they manage AM of 4.5 lakh crore. If you look at the revenue, the growth is slightly slower but the net profit growth is good, especially in the last 3 years. As far as cyclicity is concerned, 2018-20 to 20 was a phase of lower return in stock market and that resulted in slowdown in revenue growth and fall in net profit. But last 3 years have been very favourable for wealth management sector. Considering the market upcycle we are in, I expect the revenue and profit to grow in the coming quarters and next couple of years. They have a good ROE of 21%, so please ignore the debt to equity and ROCE as portion of 361 business is also into lending business. So they borrow money from market to lend it just like your banks and other NBFC, so it won't be right to look at debt to equity or uh, your ROCE, but ROE is a good metric to look at. Now if you look at the share holding, promoter holding in the company is on lower side which has reduced over the time. But it is completely absorbed by FIs that have the highest share holding with 62.4% stake and they have consistently increased their holding. Even DIs have increased the holding consistently and currently it is 8.8%. Public holding is very low at just 10.8%. If you look at the leadership, 361 has a top leadership with Mr. Nilesh Vikamse as chairman. He has 37 years of experience and he is a senior partner at KKC and Associate which is an 86 year old CA firm. Then Mr. Karan Bhagat is MD of the company. He has done his masters from IIM Bangalore with 20 years of experience. 
Then Anshuman Maheshwari is Chief Operating Officer with MBA from IIM Bangalore. Overall, they have a solid leadership team and currently 361 is trading at around 700 to P with market cap of 25,500 crore and a P ratio of 35. Then second coming in the list is Nuwama Wealth. It was part of Edelvis Group till 2021 and then PAG became its major shareholder with around 55% stake. So PAG is one of Asia's largest alternate investment firm with 2023 aim of 4.4 lakh crore. Nuama business started in 1996 with investment banking then it's added institutional equity, wealth and asset management between 2005 to 21 then it got acquired by PAG in 2021 and between 22 to 23 it transitioned the board, governance, operation and so on and now it got listed with strong governance to deliver long term value. Nuama business can be clubbed into two broader segments. First is wealth management that include your ultra HNI, HNI and AMC and then capital market that include investment banking, then your institutional equity and then clearing and custodian business. Although the capital market segment is one of the largest contributor to the total revenue with 31% contribution in FI23. However, over a period it has made progress in invest increasing the con contribution of wealth management business from 50% in FI21 to 62% in 9 months of FI24. Within that, the focus especially is in the ultra HNI segment that has been on annual recurring revenue. To put number in perspective, the revenue in wealth management uh, grew at 47% CGR between FI21 to 23 versus overall revenue growth of 24% between FI21 to 23. This picture shows the growth in revenue in last two years. And this segment represents the bifurcation where wealth and asset management has two thirds of contribution. Going forward, company is also eyeing to grow its AMC business by four to five times in the next four or five years. Again, Nuama also has a solid leadership team with years of experience. Mr. Ashish Kher is the MD and Shiv Segal is the ED. You can read their detail on the website. Nuama had its IPO last year at around 2,750 rupee and currently it is trading at around 5,000 rupee. Market cap is around 17,800 crore and P ratio is 34. So in spite of a sharp rally in last few months, company is looking reasonable in terms of valuation. Neither too expensive nor too cheap. Its promoters have 55.9% stake, FIs have 7% stake, theirs don't have much stake and public has 36% stake that also include some firms and h &I investor that also include Mr. Mukul Agrawal who invested in the company in December quarter. So although the public holding has increased in the company, the number of shareholders have reduced that shows the stake is purchased by h &Is. Then third company in the list is Anand Rati. Although Anand Rati is mainly into distribution business where it sells third party product. This slide shows that Anandrati is the third largest non-bank sponsored distributor in India where it generated 212 crore in commission in FI23 which is nearly 40% of their total revenue. Anandrati is also growing at a good rate across both revenue and net profit front. It also has a solid set of leadership. Currently Anandrati is trading at around 3800, market cap is 16,000 crore and a P ratio of 77. So if we do a comparison across these three companies, 361 is currently focused on ultra HNI, Anandrati is focused on mass market, whereas Nuwama Wealth is focused on both. In terms of business breakup, Anandrati is more focused on distribution segment, whereas 361 and Nuwama are more into your both manufacturing and distribution. Then you also have Angel One that is currently into brokerage sector. However, company's long term plan is to diversify into distribution of mutual funds, insurance, lending products and so on and even explore the wealth management segment. Angel One has grown exponentially in last 7-8 years with revenue growing 8 times and net profit up more than 20 times. As a result, its share price also got rewarded that jumped 10 times since IPO in 2020. However, there is around 20% correction from the peak. Please note that since Angel One is into broking at the moment, it is very volatile to market sentiment. The growth in last few years is due to exponential rise in Indian equity market. There was a time during 2018-20 to when the growth was stagnant. Having said this, the long term picture is still intact. If you look at the shareholding, its promoters hold around 38% stake, FIs have 19% stake that have increased consistently. They has currently have around 9% stake and public has around 33% stake. It also includes HNI investors that collectively hold around 18% stake in the company. Currently, Angel One is trading at around 3000 rupees with a market cap of around 27,000 crore and a P ratio of 25. I hope you got a fair idea of overall business model within wealth management segment and the positioning of various companies. As discussed, the overall wealth management space in India that caters to HNI and ultra HNI is expected to grow at a very fast CGR rate, creating immense opportunity in this segment. Having said this, 
please keep in mind that this is a cyclical segment where growth depend upon market sentiment and mark to market return during bull run the growth would be faster and during the bear market growth would be slower in the near term i expect the segment to continue to do well as we are in the up cycle stage and the long term structural story is anyways always intact now you might ask what about the listed amcs in india so there are many